Research this evening, we hear more and more warnings about cybersecurity and the threats from criminals in other countries to disrupt our computer systems, steal critical information and money. It's a real and growing problem. Now a man who lives in Cape Elizabeth is helping to lead the fight to protect the U.S. from those attacks. Don Kerrigan talked with Nathaniel Fick about a job he says he loves. I feel like I'm right back on the front lines of public service. Uh, in, you know, in the service of the United States. Nathaniel Fick, known as Nate around here, may have one of the most important jobs of anyone in Cape Elizabeth. Yet in this town where he's lived for five years, Nate Fick is not well known and likes it that way. So I lead technology diplomacy uh, for the United States. I'm, I couldn't be more excited. Only in his mid-40s, Fick is the first U.S. ambassador for cyberspace and digital technology, a new bureau in America's State Department working on world digital technology standards and perhaps more important, working with other countries in the endless battle for cybersecurity. I have a you know, sense of mission and purpose, um, frankly, that I haven't felt since I took off the uniform. Fick grew up in Baltimore and joined the Marine Corps right after college. That was in 1999. Peacetime, Fick says he was in Australia doing training when the war on terror began. And we watched the 9-11 attacks on a, on a TV behind a bar. Uh, you know, morning here was evening there. And, uh, and then the, before the sun came up the next morning, uh, we were aboard a, a U.S. Navy ship and on our way to the North Arabian Sea off the coast of Pakistan. For the next three years, he was leading Marines in combat. It was a... Uh, kind of a shattering experience in a lot of ways early on. Um, I was fortunate in the sense that, you know, I was physically intact after it all. I was more or less psychologically intact. Um, and I came back to a loving family and good friends. I came back to educational opportunity on the GI Bill. After earning two master's degrees from Harvard, Fick went into the business world, helped start and lead a company focused on cybersecurity. He also got married and started a family. They moved to Maine in 2017. And earlier this year, while skiing, he got the call about becoming ambassador. To design a person to fit this uh, new position, uh, you would have come up with uh, someone of, of uh, Nate Fick's uh, uh, extraordinary qualifications. With support from Senator Angus King, Fick was confirmed by the U.S. Senate and began work in September in a very unglamorous way. I thought that I'd go get sworn in in Washington in some kind of ceremony. Instead, I got sworn in by a notary at the UPS store in South Portland <laughs> because we had to get the paperwork going for me to get a diplomatic passport and get on an airplane the next day to go to Romania uh, to attend a meeting of an organization called the International Telecommunication Union, the ITU. The job, he says, has been nonstop ever since Take today in, in uh, you know, the, toward the end of 2022, we've got a shooting war in Europe, right, that's, that's happening on the eastern flank of NATO. So a lot of our effort is around making sure that war doesn't escalate. Uh, and, and escalation using digital means has been a piece of it in the last, you know, eight or nine months. At the same time, he says, they work with other nations on issues like criminal ransomware attacks on business and government and attacks on the U.S. from our biggest adversaries. The Chinese so far have not been especially concerned with taking money out of your bank account. They're interested in, in collecting personal information and building uh, a complete social graph of uh, of, of Americans, of our population, certainly of our leaders in government, in business, in, in society. He says Iran and North Korea are also trying to infiltrate our digital systems. And of course, there's Russia. Uh, Russia is taking a little bit more of a spoiler approach. Uh, misinformation, disinformation, uh, teaming up with gangs, conducting ransomware attacks or, or theft from banks. And to what extent are these foreign governments or foreign actors, to what extent are they succeeding? Uh, I would argue that the Russians uh, have been more successful than they could have hoped, uh, spreading misinformation and disinformation on social platforms in order to turn 
groups of Americans against each other. We know this. We know this. It's provable. It is completely provable. He says individual Americans and families need to understand the threats are out there. Watch for suspicious emails and not be clicking on them. Fact check what they read online. And this father of two says, be wary of social media. Do you let your kids use TikTok? No, I do not. Um, I, uh, uh, I believe that there is much more that, uh, that the social platforms should be doing, generally. I mean, I, I, Advice I and caution from a Marine who's now immersed in a new kind of combat. TikTok, of course, has ties to the Chinese government. Nate Fick says last year's ransomware attack on the Colonial Pipeline, which disrupted fuel supplies in parts of the East Coast, was a wake-up call to business and government about the cyber threats from criminals and other countries. He says all of us who are connected to the online world also need to pay attention to that threat, be careful of what we click on, and depend on proven trustworthy sources for information. If you would like to follow the work of Nate Fick and what he's doing, you can follow him on Twitter. His handle is at StateCDP.